All right, happening now, Iraqis fleeing three towns on the banks of the Euphrates River. There are new concerns that the river's water level is so low that ISIS fighters can just walk across and launch attacks. That's after ISIS militants. They shut off the gates of the Ramadi Dam. This new strategy presenting a major security and humanitarian threat. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. This low water in a riverbed in Ramadi is an attack. ISIS has closed off a dam north of the city. Water, the ultimate weapon in this blistering desert. There is this belief of if you control the water, you can control your enemy, which in that part of the world is basically true. Controlling the dam, cutting the water flow, cuts supply to pro-government towns downstream, making it easier for ISIS to attack and crops to die, local officials say. The dry riverbed also providing a potential route to attack those pro-government towns. Civilians have been on the run since ISIS seized Ramadi last month. Water, not the only battlefield tactic. Massive IEDs inside heavy armored vehicles helped win Ramadi. The U.S. expecting more of them, rushing new anti-armor weapons to Iraqi forces. For its part, the State Department defending Tony Blinken, the number two official, for publicly suggesting 10,000 ISIS fighters had been killed by airstrikes, saying it's a sign ISIS is under pressure. It's never good to have someone who's in the State Department talking about the effects of combat operations, and that's what that was. There is no military person in the world that will support a body count as an indicator of success. Is the fact that a serious number of people have been taken off the battlefield. But Blinken was using an old number. The latest body count, 13,000 ISIS killed. This will be a long-term campaign. Aspects of it will likely take a generation or more. But a long-term strategy may fall short of understanding Iraq's here and now. ISIS terrorists are doing the unthinkable. They're closing the gate to the Ramadi Dam. That means a vital water source is cut off for cities controlled by government forces. GRN reporter Campbell McDermott is live in Iraq. He joins us. Campbell, um, tell me about what they're doing to this dam. Hi Greta, well as you said they've uh, closed the gates to this dam which is located in Ramadi on the Euphrates River and Iraqi officials are sounding the alarm about the security and humanitarian implications of this. The strategy appears to have a dual purpose. Um, downstream the water level on the Euphrates has dropped and this is allowing ISIS fighters to move more freely. The Iraqi strategy so far against ISIS and Anbar is to seal off access to Ramadi um, Iraqi forces are stationed on bridges across the Euphrates, but now ISIS is going to be able to travel across the river at any point, meaning more Iraqi troops will need to be committed to halting them. Uh, the second major effect of this is humanitarian, that the, the w drinking water supplies are threatened to some of the last areas held by pro-government forces in Anbar. Uh, Greta? I, I, I was going to ask you about the humanitarian aspect. Any, no, any idea of the number of people who are going to have their water supply cut off? Yeah, well, the UN was already supplying um, emergency water to Habanea Township, um, tens of thousands, I believe. Uh, the fear is the situation now is, could get a whole lot worse with um, the Euphrates water supply in jeopardy. Uh, Iraqi officials are releasing some water from the Habanea uh, Lake downstream so that uh, southern provinces will have some uh, flow still coming through. But they said this is a temporary solution only. It'll only last for a few days. So they are saying they need to uh, either retake the dam, which is going to be difficult because it's in Ramadi, or maybe destroy it with airstrikes.
So, so what is the plan? I mean, just to wait it out. I mean, if they can't go in and they can't uh, throw ISIS out and reopen the dam, uh, so what's inevitable? Just that these people are going to be without water, uh, and it's a, tr a strategic advantage for ISIS. Is that the end of this? Yeah, I mean, th this is something that ISIS has done before. Uh, last summer, you know, when they were blitzkrieging across Iraq, they uh, they took control of the Mosul Dam briefly, and they also tried to take the Haditha Dam. These are bigger dams on the Euphrates. And this, the fear was the same then, that they would either stop the water supply or, um, in, that, in the case of those ones, inundate southern Iraq. Uh, so we saw then that it was imperative for them to retake these uh, dams, and in that case, U.S. airstrikes uh, were helpful in enabling the Kurds to recapture the Mosul Dam and to prevent ISIS from taking the Haditha Dam. Greta? Campbell, Campbell, thank you. ISIS cutting off a vital lifeline to thousands of people. The militants have shut most of the gates to a dam in the Iraqi city of Ramadi, that's right along the Euphrates River. And the move by ISIS could make it easier for it to attack towns downstream. CNN senior international correspondent Nick Payton Walsh live in Baghdad to tell us more. Hi, Nick. Carol, there are two real sides to this, as you mentioned. It seems that ISIS now have pretty definitively closed uh, more or less all of the 26 gates of the dam they've controlled outside of Ramadi. They let two or three open occasionally, we understand, to let water flow down from that river, uh, the Euphrates River, from Ramadi all the way down to Fallujah, which they already control. They want to make sure some water flows down to their people there, but they're stemming the vast majority of that water. And we've just actually been seeing social media pictures uploaded that show how that downstream some of the riverbed is exposed and upstream there are pictures of how it's overflowing people holding fish they've caught clearly a bid by ISIS to say to those people caught up in the fighting there look we have the one thing you need for agriculture for basic daily life in this punishing climate out here in the desert here water now another element of course is exposing itself to we're hearing reports that potentially uh, near some of the areas that are contested the riverbed uh, may actually be one meter that's three feet closer now than it was before the river has dropped, we understand. Now, that will make it potentially a lot easier for ISIS to attack pro-government positions along that riverbed being defended often by Shia fighting groups there. That makes them much more vulnerable to attack because ISIS could simply walk across the moats effectively uh, they've been uh, held back by in the past days. Two substantial issues here, but in the months ahead it's going to be that humanitarian crisis that plays harder we've heard in this region as the population expands and the climate worsens at times weapon being used as a water as a threat now we're finally seeing it this emerging though on a day in which the united nations calls for nearly a billion dollars immediately to assist the eight to ten million people urgently in need of assistance right now just in iraq that's how how bad the crisis is, this water crisis unfolding around Ramadi, a part of that picture. Carol? All right, Nick Payton Walsh reporting live from Baghdad this morning. Thank you.